Hello everyone, today I will discuss something about amino acid and I will try to give an idea about different type of amino acid. Let's go. First you see this is a common structure of an amino acid and the reason of called amino acid is it contain amino group which is little bit base and also contain carboxyl group here and it must contain an alpha uh, carbon that's why we called it alpha amino acid and there must be one side chain and on the base of this side chain, uh, side chain we can classify it in different groups but this is very common structure for maximum amino acids uh, most of the amino acids especially who are contributing to uh, to form protein but there is an exception which is proline proline is an exception uh, although proline is a cyclic amino acid uh, but it's an exception because they made a bond with the amino group I will discuss later and amino acid is the building block of protein as I told earlier this contain amino group and carboxyl group and amino acid uh, here in carbon, you have seen this is known as chiral carbon. Chiral mean carbon means its four hands contain four different functional group. So being functional chiral carbon, they are also show stereo isomer L and D. Most of the protein proteinogenic amino acid, that means the amino acid which form protein are L stereo isomer. That means they are L type, not D type. But of course, still we find some D type amino acid in very small peptides, especially uh, which are contributing to form bacterial cell wall. Broadly, we can classify amino acid in two groups. One is proteinogenic and another one is non-proteinogenic. So, what is proteinogenic amino acid? As from the name, we can easily understand that they are contributing during the translation. In translation, they incorporated biosynthetically into protein. That means, up to translation, they are called, if they contribute up to translation, these are known proteinogenic amino acid. And there is some amino acid which can contribute after translation that is the post translational modification for example hydroxyproline hydroxylysine they are not amino they are not proteinogenic amino acid they are non proteinogenic amino acid that means to be proteinogenic amino acid these amino acid must contribute within translation then so far there are 22 genetically encoded amino acids which we called proteinogenic amino acid. There are a lot of amino acids among them 22 are responsible to code protein and among these 22 20 amino acids known as standard genetic code. As you know from the code table there is AUG start codon and there are a lot of code and this 20 is standard and 2 which are special translational mechanism they are incorporated these two known as selenocysteine and pyrolysine. Pyrolysine. So selenocysteine is similar to cysteine. I will discuss uh, later. And pyrolysine, they are called, they are from pyrrole group. And these two are recently invented. Among these, pyrolysine is only found in microorganism. They um, code protein, not for plants and mammals. Let's go next slide. Here I want to show you uh, what is selenocysteine and how it differ with cysteine. As you see from the structure, cysteine contains sulfur uh, group, sulfur containing amino acid cysteine and here instead of sulfur, selenium is incorporated. That's why it's not a selenocysteine. Selenocysteine and three letter code is SEC that is the, the uh, for selenocysteine and one letter code you know one letter code is very important 
especially if you want to do some bioinformatics stuff. So in codon, uh, it's code for UGA. You know, UGA is a stop codon. But here there's some modifications, translational stage. That's why this UGA code for cell and cysteine. As we told that in selenocysteine contains selenium and its uh, PK value, PK stands for a dissociation uh, factor is 5.47 uh, which is lower than uh, cysteine. That means it can easily dissociate and that can act as a strong nucleophilic than cysteine. Selenocysteine found in several enzymes like glutathione peroxidase, thioredoxine reductase and also other enzyme. And another uh, last so far 22 pyrolysine is called pyrolysine this amino acid which is uh, known as proteinogenic amino acid and pyrolysine from the structure you have seen is 2 L lysine combined to form a pyrrole group and that's why it's known it's called pyrolysine. Here if you look closely you will see that this group combined here and they form a viral ring and this one and this amino group is released here and this one attached with here to by removing one H2O. So they are joined to form a pyrrole group this is known as pyrolysine and pyrolysine is again code codon is UAG and again UAG it's also known as stop codon but here as I told earlier there's some modification in translational stage that's why UAG code for pyrolysine and pyrolysine is found mostly in few arachne and bacteria not in plants or mammals so it's one letter code is O and three letter code PH PYL. In next slide you have seen as I told earlier this is the latest and OU State University uh, founded in 2002 and this is the latest proteinogenic amino acid. Then I will discuss about different types of proteinogenic amino acid. First, based on the side chain properties, as I showed from the very beginning that in alpha carbon there is a side chain which I denoted here as R. On the basis of the polarity and charge of this side chain, we can classify proteinogenic amino acid in different group. First, nonpolar. Nonpolar means they are hydrophobic. They don't like water and another one is polar polar means they are hydrophilic but they are uncharged and another one is of course polar this acidic has negatively charged basic they have positively charged so based on the side chain properties we can classify proteinogenic amino acid in four group non-polar polar uncharged acidic and basic Let's talk about nonpolar or hydrophobic amino acid. Usually, nonpolar or hydrophobic amino acid they contain H and C group, C atom, and uh, they are commonly found in interior of proteins. That means the uh, between the proteins, they are not found in surface. As you know, they are. Uh, Nonpolar, they don't like water, they don't want to go interact with water. Uh, but then the question arises how they interact with them. They interact with them with the Van der Waals interaction. Okay, let's see. Glycine, alanine. Glycine is the uh, most simple, the simplest structure of amino acid. Uh, but uh, it has very special, uh, what it called, special criteria is very flexible and this flexibility is crucial especially to form different loops turn you know helix loop helix helix turn helix there is some DNA binding motifs 
and there you will find a lot of gly uh, glycine in the loops and turns. Then uh, we can discuss about proline. This is also nonpolar and aliphatic. It looks like aromatic, but this is not actually. Uh, it's known as aliphatic because you see this is very different. In every side chain, they are not connected with amine group. Here, everything is every amino acid they have amine group here as I told earlier that proline is the exception because it can contain amine group and it's two group but they have uh, contained secondary amine this secondary amine this is called secondary amine and this connected uh, with the carbon that's why it's called aliphatic these are nonpolar they are not react with water as I told and there are also some aromatic uh, aromatic group which are also non-polar and these are phenylalanine, tyrosine and tryptophan. As I told earlier uh, in this slide that uh, usually non-polar amino acid they contain carbon and hydrogen atom but you will see here tyrosine contain OH group. So uh, there is debate that uh, there are some people say uh, in some case they say it is uh, like polar of course as having OH group they should uh, for show the polarity but here the uh, OH group and the benzene group you know benzene here for example in phenyl and in benzene group so no way to be polar non-polar and in tyrosine, its polarity is very lower. That's why in sometimes we can just neglect it. Comparing to the polar, this polarity is very lower, especially negativity is very lower. And it has also a benzene ring. That's why uh, we can consider it at non-polar. And also tryptophan, it has also uh, nitrogen, which is also the reason of having uh, polarity to show polarity but here also the same case the polarity is very lower that's why you can call it non-polar so in next slide I want to show polar but uncharged R group here you see these are the polar serine threonine cysteine aspargine and glutamine here interestingly cysteine it's polar but when two cysteine are covalently bond in disulfide bond then they are non-polar this is very interesting i will uh, talk it a little bit later but they are non uh, they are uncharged but they are polar but uncharged as i told earlier that they are functional group uh, if they contain functional group oh and then nh2 sh or c double oh then we can call these at the polar usually and the polar amino acid they stand uh, the surface of the protein and they are very effective to bind with ligands so here positively charged amino acid so far the three positively charged amino acid lysine arginine and histidine and also two negatively charged amino proteinogenic amino acid we observed one is aspartate and another is glutamate as you see uh, they are CWH functional group is negative so you can call them negative uh, charged R group and their amine group is positively charged then in next slide as I told earlier that cysteine uh, cysteine usually it's polar but when two cysteines are covalently linked to form dimer amino acid called cysteine. This cysteine is nonpolar. Here one cysteine, another cysteine and they bind together by releasing proton and electron, two proton, two electron and they bind a disulfide bond. And this disulfide bond is very very crucial especially to form the 3d structure of protein and also it has a lot of benefits 
I will talk later in the protein part, hopefully. Uh, so, then uh, I just show here one uh, on chromatographic plate. Here uh, we see this one is arginine and this one is methionine. We look that here methionine go faster than arginine. Why? Because arginine it's positively charged, they react with the stationary phase, that's why they go behind and uh, the methionine which is you see nonpolar, having nonpolar they can go faster than arginine. Just to show uh, we can check it in TLC plate or paper chromatography plate or whatever it is. Let's talk about the summary of today's lecture. As we have seen that amino acid must contain an amino group and a carboxyl group and there must be an alpha carbon. In alpha carbon there is a side chain. That's why most of the case we called amino acid as alpha amino acid. And this is the common structure for most of the proteinogenic amino acid but exception is the proline and then we can classify amino acid on the base of uh, their side chain group especially uh, there is 22 uh, genetically encoded proteinogenic amino acid among this 22 genetically encoded or proteinogenic uh, amino acid which can contribute to form protein we can classify in nonpolar polar amino group uncharged positively charged and negatively charged based on the uh, charged on the side chain base of the this side chain we can classify in nonpolar it mostly contain hydrogen and carbon atoms and these are the uh, very frequently found in the middle in the interior of proteins as they are hydro phobic and they interact with each other by using van der Waals interaction and in case of polar amino group uh, in case of non-polar the example is glycine alanine proline etc they are aliphatic and in case of aromatic non-polar amino acid these are phenylalanine tyrosine and tryptophan and in case of polar amino group functional group will be must be OH, NH2, CWH or SH and they usually found in the surface of the proteins and they are very effective in ligand bindings and the positively charged amino acid is lysine, histidine and arginine and negatively charged amino acid are aspartic and glutamate. That's all about today's lecture. In next lecture I will discuss how we can classify proteinogenic amino acid based on the nutritional status. Thank you very much for watching.